Hi, welcome back. After successfully completing module 1, let us move on to module 2. Module 2 is extension of module 1 where we are going to study important components like pumps and actuators. So in today's class, we are going to concentrate on pumps. So we have three segments in this module that is pumps, accumulators and actuators. So in this lecture, we are going to concentrate on pumps. The topics which I am going to cover in today's class are pumps and its classification and uh, the first variant that is the gear pumps. So this is the uh, syllabus prescribed by the VTU for the second module. So the first section is pumps. So you are going to study all these topics. The second segment is accumulators. And the third segment is actuators. So in today's class, we are going to study the first segment that is pumps. So these are the symbols. So we will start with pumps. So what is the objective of this class? First objective is to define a pump. Second objective is to classify based on certain references or criteria, different types of pumps. The third objective is to explore the working principle of different types of pumps used in hydraulic and pneumatic systems. Also to study the various nomenclature used to describe the working principle of the different variants of pumps in fluid power engineering. So first of all, we should know what is a pump. So first thing comes into mind is the pump is a power absorbing device, whereas devices like turbine, they are power developing devices. These pumps or whether it is motor, they are all come under power, power absorbing category that is power absorbing devices. So what does a pump do? So the pump will enhance the flow pressure. Mainly it is used for circulation. The pump will convert the low pressure of the flowing fluid into the high pressure. So the pump works on converting the electric energy into the mechanical motion. That is electrical energy like voltage is converted into the rotary motion which creates the pressure enhancements. Pump is also considered as one of the important prime mover in fluid power engineering. So due to this mechanical motion created inside the pump, it creates suction and which in turn sucks the water or the other fluid from the reservoir. The pump action is based on certain working principle and they are broadly classified into different headings based on certain references. The pump is basically used to push the fluid into a system. So basically it is used for forced circulation. So let us move on to the classification of pumps. Pumps are broadly classified into two types. The first one is dynamic pump which is also called as non-positive displacement pump. The second one is the positive displacement pump. Let us understand what is the first one that is the dynamic pump or non-positive displacement pump. This type of pump is especially used for low pressure and moderate pressure applications. The 
but they do not withstand eye pressure in the fluid application and normally their the pressure working pressure ranges from 200 to 300 bar, but they are primarily used for circulation purpose that is transferring the fluid from the source to the receiver. The most common types of dynamic pumps are the centrifugal and axial flow propeller pumps. So, these are commercial pumps which we are using in our daily walks of life. So, centrifugal pump we are using in our house, but this pump uses only water. So, what is the second type of pump? The positive displacement pump. So, this type is universally used for fluid power systems. The non positive types is not used, it is used only for circulation, whereas for positive displacement pump we extensively use for fluid power engineering. This means, as the name itself implies, uh, it pumps fixed quantity of fluid into the fluid power systems and mainly based on the rotation of the pump shaft. This pump is capable of overcoming the pressure generated resulting from mechanical loads on the system as well as the resistance to flow. The positive displacement pump is further classified into two types. One is fixed displacement pump as the name suggests, it has only fixed volume ejected per revolution and this is fixed for the pump, it cannot be varied. The reverse that is variable displacement pump, as the name suggests, you can vary the displacement per revolution by varying the physical properties of the pump elements. But the even though we are varying the physical properties, the pump speed remains constant, that is how it is designed. The advantage of positive displacement pump over non positive displacement pump that is we are we have to clearly differentiate between the pumps two types of pump for better understanding. They can operate at very high pressure up to 800 bar whereas, your non positive displacement non positive displacement pump is 200 to 300 bar whereas, this positive displacement bump exceeds 800 bar. So, that is why it is used for deep well application. They can achieve volumetric efficiency over 98 percent. If you prevent leakage, so automatically volumetric difference efficiency will go up. They are very highly efficient compared to the other systems of pumps. So, that is why positive displacement pump finds their place in fluid power systems. They have replaced the non positive pumps. They are very compact and high power to weight ratio. They are quite in operation, smooth in operation and precise in motion. They have better control, you can use starters to control these pumps and they quickly adapt to the load fluctuations and the desired velocity is maintained, the velocity of the fluid in context with the velocity of the fluid. They have greater flexibility in terms of pressure head as well as the operating speed. So, wide range of speeds are available depending upon the head. 
So, let us move on to after uh, clearly differentiating the different types of pumps. Now, comparing the positive displacement pump with the uh, non positive displacement pump and clearly upholding that the positive displacement pump are best suited for the fluid power system. Now, let us concentrate on the theory behind the positive displacement pump that is what is the working principle of positive displacement pump. So, pump operates on the principle that the vacuum is created due to the mechanical motion inside the piston and this creates a suction pressure which sucks the fluid from the receiver and supplies supply to the inlet of the pump. So, this mechanical rotation of the member a rotary member called impeller will create the action which will further enhance the pressure of the flowing fluid. So, this is the schematic diagram of the positive displacement pump as you can see here this is the tank and this is the first element that is the strainer, this is the suction pipe at the end of the suction pipe strainer or filter is fitted. The strainer blocks any contamination entering into the system. So, a breather is provided, breather will keep the atmospheric pressure constant throughout this uh, tank, some tank and then it acts as a vent. The suction pipe is connected to this hydraulic cylinder fitted with a frictionless piston and once the outlet is there, once the piston moves from one position to another position that is the extreme position, if this is an horizontal cylinder, the piston moves from inner dead center to outer dead center. So, suction is created, the pressure is created, it is something like syringe. So, when you insert syringe into a medicine uh, can, so what will happen is you can draw the medicine out and again you can inject the medicine to the person, right. The same suction and delivery stroke, same thing here, the illustration. So, suction of the fluid takes place by withdrawing the piston. So, the entire chamber is filled with fluid and once you extend the piston forward, so, pressure is applied to the fluid and it moves up. Of course, the suction valve need to be kept and it blocks the fluid from entering back. Similarly, this is the reverse case. What is happening is the piston is applying pressure on the fluid and the fluid will jump and move towards the height or the altitude. So, this works in cycle. So, you can see the fluid being pressurized by the working principle of the piston. So, one thing very important to keep in mind. So, during suction stroke and during delivery stroke, the during suction stroke, the suction stroke is act, suction pipe is active and delivery pipe is closed. During delivery stroke, the suction pipe is closed and the delivery pipe is opened by means of valves. So, these two, two valves are required, one fitted to the suction side and one fitted to the delivery side. So, suction valve and delivery valve. So, suction valve is open during suction stroke delivery valve is open during delivery stroke, but in either cases the other valves are closed. If suction valve is closed, delivery valve is open. If delivery valve is closed, suction valve is open and vice versa. So, this plunge and extraction movement of this piston will create additional pressure on the fluid. So, it suction and then additional pressure. So, somewhat it is it can be visualized as two stage. This is a single acting piston cylinder arrangement. 
So, this explains the part working principle of the positive displacement pump and uh, as the piston moves to the left, the partial pressure is created in the pump chamber that holds outlet valve in place against its seats and induces high pressure. So, this high pressure fluid is circulated to the next device that is direction control valve. So, there are two events mainly happening in any positive displacement pump. If you take an example of an hydraulic cylinder, one is suction and another one is delivery. During suction stroke, fluid enters into the cylinder and by backward movement of the piston and during the delivery stroke, the suction, the fluid is ejected out of the cylinder by forward movement of the piston. So, moving on, we need to know other than hydraulic cylinder, do we have any other pump which can be used as positive displacement pump. So far, we come across pumps which are centrifugal pumps or the domestic pumps we have aware about, but we, have, we, we are not, about, not at all worried about the pumps which we are using knowingly and unknowingly. So, knowingly we are using centrifugal, centrifugal pump and unknowingly we are using gear pumps, vein pumps. So, gear pumps if you go to petrol bank, you can see that gear pumps are operating and continuously sucking out viscous petrol from the sump that is the tank and delivering it to the every small fuel tank fitted to the vehicles. So, gear pumps as the name itself suggest they employ gears, spur gears. So, there are two possibilities, one is the external gear pump, another one is the internal gear pump. So, along with that we are going to study the vein pumps. So, under vein pump we are going to study balanced and unbalanced vein pump and the third category piston pumps, axial type and radial type. So, all the three positive displacement pumps we, we are going to study with special reference to working principle, their advantages, disadvantages and their nomenclature. First, let us study gear pump. So, gear pump as the name itself suggests consists of gears. <clears throat> it is broadly classified into two types or it is available into two types. One is external gear pump <coughs> and another one is internal gear pump. So, first let us study the external gear pump. So, external gear pump is a very compact gear pump. It consists of two spur gears meshing each other. They are identical spur gears. They are twins. They are having the same pitch circle diameter, the number of teeth, pitch etcetera. They are meshing one another. So, one is the driver and other one is also the driven right it is connected to the motor and the entire uh, assembly is enclosed inside a chamber and this is the bottom is the suction side top is the delivery side and once the motor is running the driver gear starts rotating in one direction say clockwise direction the driven gear starts rotating in the anti clockwise direction right. So, as two gears are meshing one another, continuous smooth rotation is happening. So, a vertex flow is created, vacuum is created in the bottom side of the gears and suction is created. So, you have to connect the pipe and the pipe is in turn dipped into the storage tank to fill the, to uh, suck the uh, hydraulic fluid to that hydraulic fluid, we are having a strainer fitted which will prevent contamination entering into this chamber. So, continuously fluid is sucked and due to the rotation of this high speed rotation of this gear, <coughs> more pressure is created. So, whirl is created. So, once the whirl is created, tremendous amount of pressure is created and it is coming out from the output side of this gear pump and uh, the highly viscous fluid 
other than water is used for this type of pumps. This type of pumps operate on viscous fluid and uh, it is circulated to far away distances. So, this is used in some of the applications like petrol bunk, fluid power systems employed in power plants. So, this is using internal gears. So, that is the external gear, we are using external gear. So, this is the gear pair is external. Now, let us move on to the internal gear system. So, we can see that there is an internal gear system which is exactly similar to the previous one, but there is two gears acting, one is the outer gear and one is the inner gear. So, this outer gear is fixed, it is having the teeth and the inner gear is rotating. So, the inner gear is rotating, the outer gear is fixed or stationary and you can see that a crescent shape uh, is formed due to the eccentricity generated by the axis of the centers of this gear with the center of the fixed gear. So, the center of the fixed gear is not exactly aligned to the center of the rotating gear. A small amount of eccentricity or unknown is present that creates this crescent. So, this crescent creates the vacuum. You can see that it is gradually increasing, increasing, maximum again decreasing, right. So, it keeps on what? Rotating and the crescent shape is created. And you can see that the, in the positions of the inlet and the outlet. So, they are mutually perpendicular. So, unlike in the previous case, wherein the inlet and the outlet were in line, right? That is, they were exactly in line. Now, it is at mutually perpendicular to the flow. The flow is mutually perpendicular, right? So, this is inlet and this is the outlet. So, inlet, the fluid is sucked from the receiver or from the storage tank and it is delivered at a much high pressure to the next member of the application. So, this internal gear is much what uh, compact in nature compared to the previous variant that external gear and the stability problem it, uh, is also uh, it is more stable and no question of stability problem in this case and also smooth operation is ensured and uh, the pressure developed in this variant is much much more than the external gear. This internal gear is meshing the, the fixed gear, both are internal gear. This is the fixed gear and this is the, sorry, this is the rotating gear and this is the outside is the fixed gear and this is continuously rotating and you can see that at some point there is meshing and some other point there is no meshing. There is a gap created, there is a crescent ga shape gap is created. So, the fluid enters and fills this gap. The fluid enters and fills this gap and it rotates. Advantages of gear pumps, they are self priming. So, no question of cavitation and other problems. They give constant delivery at a given speed. They are very compact, rugged, light in weight, but they have some disadvantages. The liquid to be pumped must be clean, otherwise they damage the pump, so filter is must. The variable speed drives are required to change the delivery load. They run if they run dry, that is without the fluid that results in overheating and damage the parts. 
or it is the advantage and disadvantages of the gear pump both internal and external. So, moving further let us understand the volumetric displacement and theoretical flow rate. So, what is this displacement? The displacement is the quantity of fluid per unit time delivered by the pump and the theoretical flow rate is very important both are related to the flow characteristics of the pump. So, let us analyze certain geometrical parameters related to this pump. The first one is D suffix O that is outside diameter of the gear teeth in meters. Next is D suffix I inside diameter of the gear teeth in meters. L width of the gear in meters. V suffix D displacement value of the pump in meter cube per revolution. N pump RPM. So, this is the parameters which is used to describe gear pumps. Q T theoretical flow rate. Now, volumetric displacement is given by V suffix D is equal to pi by 4 pi by 4 multiplied by d 0 d 0 square minus d i square into L. Theoretical flow rate is given by Q theoretical is equal to V suffix D into N. So, simply it is volume into length area in volume is equal to area into length based on that we have this equations. Volumetric efficiency. Volumetric efficiency is very important because it depends upon the leakage. The if the leakage is less, the volumetric efficiency will be more. That is, you can deliver more quantity of fluid at a at almost negligible loss. There must be a small clearance less than 25 microns between two gear tips in the pump housing. As a result, some of the oil discharge port can leak. So, we need to know what is the actual amount of pump volume discharged to the ideal volume. So, to compare the actual quantity and theoretical quantity, we have a volumetric efficiency as the indirect. So, volumetric efficiency is nothing but the ratio of actual discharge to theoretical discharge. So, higher the discharge pressure, lower the volumet volumetric efficiency because of internal leakage increases with the pressure. So, after studying the different types of pump available that is the gear pump after studying in detail the gear pumps followed by the two variants internal and external gear pump their volumetric efficiency right. Let us move on to the next type that is vein pumps. So, further classification of vein pump leads to this positive the further classification of positive displacement pump leads to vein pumps which employ veins. They are further classified into unbalanced vein pump and obviously, a balanced vein pump. In their unbalanced vein pump you find fixed displacement type and uh, pressure compensated or pressure compensated or variable displacement type. Second one is balanced vein pump. So, under vein pump you have unbalanced vein pump and balanced vein pump. So, this is the unbalanced fixed displacement type. So, you can see this animation right. So, you can find out why, why that unbalance is created intentionally. So, these are all the veins, these are all the veins right. You can see the different types of veins. Now, you can see that the veins are non-uniform that is you can see this is the fluid, the blue color is the fluid and it is small at here, it keeps on increasing, increasing, increasing 
again decreasing increasing. So, vertex type what is created right the vertex flow is created which results in the crescent shape gap formed. So, taper at the beginning gradually increasing increasing and the red zone says that it is gradually decreasing. The blue zone says that it is gradually increasing, the pressure is increasing and the red zone says that it is gradually decreasing. So, this is an unbalanced fixed displacement type, unbalanced because we are having the length of the vein unequal, right. So, it is gradually becoming increasing as well as decreasing, right. So, fixed displacement means it is providing fixed quantity of fluid, right. So, you can see this type the working principle of inline type. So, inlet and outlet are exactly opposite to one another and you can see this uh, rotor inside. So, this rotor is continuously rotating and the rotor is having fi the veins fixed and you can see the working principle here what is happening at every point of time pre instantaneously pressure differentiation is pressure is building up it is building up and again it is falling. The pressure is increasing and it becomes the maximum and again pressure drops and it becomes minimum or 0, right. So, this is the working principle of vein pump. So, vein pump have rotors, veins, dry shaft, of course, eccentricity, right. So, the rotor and cam, they are very important. Cam is the fixed member, rotor is the rotating member. So, the pumping chamber is enclosed inside the enclosure. So, this is the explanation of the basic components of vein pump in under un, unbalanced category. So, unbalanced pressure compensated variable displacement type. So, you can see the working principle here the same pump, what is the change here? We have spring attached. So, that spring is available here, which will balance for the maximum pressure generated. So, the spring is balancing the pressure. So, that is why it is called unbalanced pressure compensated variable displacement. So, pressure is compensated by this spring. So, the maximum load is taken up by this spring. So, you can see the working principle here as the veins are rotating, right. Once it reaches the maximum, right, the spring will deflect, right. You can see the components here as usual the outer ring that is the cam ring available, it is fixed member. These are the veins. So, one dozen, two dozen veins are available, differential veins because it is unbalanced type. At the center, there is the rotor, right. So, inlet port and the exhaust port, so, they are mutually perpendicular. So, in the previous case, they were in line, but in this case, it is mutually perpendicular. So, this is pressure compensated vein pump for you. Balance type. So, that was unbalanced type vein pump, pressure compensated and without compensated. Now, let us move on to the balance type vein pump. So, the balance type vein pump, the name itself is balanced as you can see here that the same components are there that is the vein, the cam and the rotor, the vein, cam and the rotor, they are there. But here you can see that the green pipe that is the inlet pipe and the outlet pipe that is the red pipe, they are mutually perpendicular. and you can see that uh, if you analyze this diagram, you, can, you will see that the green pipe is supplying the fluid from top and the bottom portion. So, continuously it is balanced. So, from the top also fluid is flowing and from the bottom is also flowing. So, they are opposite, the flow is balanced, right. And if you see the red pipe, the delivery pipe, so from the left side and the right side continuously it is branching out and it is common and delivery, common delivery outlet, right. So, that is why the name it is called as 
balance type right so it is continuously rotating and it is balanced by the suction and the delivery side by having pipes one on the top side one at the bottom side continuously supplying equal volume of fluid into the system so delivery side also it is branching out so this is what opposing pressure ports cancel the side load on the shaft so this is balance type what was the main problem with the previous case unbalanced type was under high load and under high speed whirling of the shaft takes place so if reaches to a such a stage that if it is reaches if it is becomes equal to the external frequency resonance will occur so here that resonance problem is cancelled so this is called as balance type vein pump analysis of volumetric displacement pump so you can see let us understand understand the what are the basic geometry involved in this type of pump so dc is the diameter of the cam so as i told you that cam is the stationary member dr is the diameter of the rotor l is the width of the rotor vd is the pump volumetric displacement in cubic meters e is the eccentricity that is the cam center and the rotor center are at an offset E max is the maximum possible eccentricity. Vd max is the maximum possible volumetric displacement. So these are all parameters necessary for pump performance. So from the geometry we can find out the maximum possible eccentricity as E max is equal to d diameter of the cam minus diameter of the rotor divided by two. This maximum value of eccentricity produces a maximum volumetric displacement which is calculated as vd max is equal to pi by 4 open the bracket dc square minus dr square into l so where dc and dr are the respective diameters of cam and the rotor l is the rotor width noting that we have the difference between two square term yields vd max is equal to pi this is something like uh, a square minus b square right a square minus b square is equal to a plus b into a minus b so we have this dc plus dr in the bra bracket dc minus dr whole thing multiplied by l so substituting the equation we get vd max is equal to pi by 4 dc plus dr multiplied by 2e max into l because of the eccentricity equation and the actual volumetric efficiency is given by after simplifying pi by 2 so 2 2 cancels pi by 2 dc plus dr into e into l so this is the final equation piston pumps as the name itself suggest they they employ cylinders and pistons so they are broadly classified into two types axial design and radial design so under both axial design we have bent axis design and swash plate design so piston pumps are broadly classified into axial design pump and radial design pump under axial design pump bent axis design and swash plate design we need to explore one by one all these types of uh, designs or configurations available so first one axial pist piston pump bent axis design as the name itself suggest so you can see this pump which is very compact and which can be fitted directly to the pipeline between the uh, storage tank and the direction control valve now you can see the arrangement here the axis of the the pump is not straight it is not zero there is certain angle right that is angle is called as theta right so it consists of small small openings here you can see the openings here so it is having 6 uh, to 8 openings inside that there are small small pistons engaged right so at a, it operates at certain angle with so the axis angle is theta so this shows maximum angle less angle and no angle so no angle means the suction and the delivery are in line 
so the delivery and suction at a certain angle right so continuous rotation of this uh, pipe results in engagement and disengagement partially or completely with respect to cylinders and pistons according to this various uh, cylinder holes provided so the volumetric displacement of this pump varies with the offset angle as shown in the previous diagram the flow is produced when the cylinder block center line is parallel to the driven shaft the angle vary from 0 to maximum let us see the animation the next type is axial piston swash plate design you can see this multi cylinder available here you can see the differential type so what is happening here so continuously uh, volume is been displaced by not by one cylinder but by an array of cylinders and this is the swash plate so the swash plate is design is peculiar it is not a vertical swash plate it is a tapered swash plate so that the differential what extensions and retractions of the different types of pistons occur right so you can see this arrangement here where you are having seeing multiple pistons engaged inside the cylinders but all are not having the same stroke they are having different stroke so in one cycle every say around six uh, cylinders are engaged so all six cylinders will be having different types of uniform strokes so it is gradually increasing as well as decreasing so this is the slot the design of the uh, swash plate so this is the stroke for different angle so as the name suggests you can have different angle right for pla swash plate so swash plate compared to the bent axis type is more effective for high pressure operation so analysis of volumetric displacement and theoretical flow rate with respect to this type of axial flow pumps so we need to know the geometry that is theta is the offset angle s is the stroke d is the pitch circle diameter y is the number of pistons because it employs more number of pistons a is the area of each piston n is the rpm of the shaft q is the qt is the theoretical flow rate from trigonometric equation if you analyze that tan theta is equal to s by d or cross multiply s is equal to d times tan theta d is the diameter of the pitch circle diameter further the total displacement volume equals to the number of pistons multiplied by the displacement volume per piston therefore volumetric displacement vd is equal to y into a into s where y is the number of piston a is the cross sectional area of the piston and s is the stroke from 1 and 2 we get v, uh, v suffix d is equal to y a d tan theta theoretical flow rate is equal to q theoretical is equal to d a n y tan theta because flow rate is equal to area into velocity so this is the radial piston pump you can see the animation of the radial piston pump wherein you can see different types of piston that was axial piston pump so axial piston pump the position of the pistons were axial now this is radial piston pump so you can see the spokes in that fashion there are different radial pumps operating right so the radial pump they are operating like this and you can see the blue shape that is the fluid being continuously circulated inside that cylinder and that too at the differential rate right so it consists of pistons multiple pistons and there is a uh, what cam which is fixed member the rotor which is ro um, movable member and the fluid is flowing from one side 
and I pressure is created on the other side. So, radial piston configuration is more stable compared to axial piston. So, finally, you can see the working principle of the radial piston pump. So, the radial piston pump you can see continuously it is circulating the fluid right and it is working. So, the radial uh, applic coming to the application of radial piston pump we will uh, have to appreciate that the axial piston pump is used for low pressure application whereas, radial pressure uh, piston pump is used for high pressure application. So, you can see com complete rotation of the veins. So, this is the working principle of radial piston pump. We will summarize a quick recap of what all we learned today. Pumps definition, pumps classification, working principle, pump nomenclature. We have studied for gear pumps, vein pumps and piston pumps and its variants. So, outcome at the end of this course the student will be able to explain the working principle of different types of gear and vein pumps, describe the nomenclature of gear and vein pumps. So, with this we have explained all the types of gear and vein pumps and piston pumps. So, in the next class we are going to continue with this uh, next important uh, pumps that is the different efficiencies. So, few more variants we are going to study along with the mechanical efficiencies related to pumps. Thank you.